Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Nicole with Made From Scrap and today I wanted to go over with you sizing and preparing your album covers using the lay flat method that Tammy has taught on her page um, and that I have adapted a little bit. I'll show you how. So what I wanted to do first is this is the paper collection that I'm going to be using today and I have these four by six cut aparts included in this package and so I want to create something that has a waterfall to it so I know that they are four inches tall and six inches wide so I want my album to be wider than that so that it can accommodate the waterfall and not just accommodate it, but have some extra space uh, so that it doesn't uh, bind up inside and get all mangled. So I am planning on not only this six inch wide, but I'm thinking my album will be no less than seven inches in width. So I'm gonna make an album that is seven inches wide and then the height of it, I want to at least have two of these. So since each one of them are four inches, I'm gonna add another inch to that so that I have a half inch above and below, and that will give me some space to do maybe some tuck spots and, and pull out features. So I'm gonna do an album that is seven inches wide and nine inches tall, and that's how I'm planning this paper collection. The point is, once you uh, determine what size you want to use for your chipboard, you want to go ahead and cut that down. So I'm going to bring in my cutter here and I'm going to first cut off the seven inches, the smaller dimension. And then I'm going to cut this down to nine inches tall. And so now I have an album piece that is seven by nine. And I'm going to do that a second time. So I have two of those, a front and back. These I will save for some other album uh, to use. And then what I'm going to do here is cut this down to nine inches as well. And then I want to have a little uh, folio. So I'm just going to make mine about an inch and a half in width. So now I have all of my pieces. These are scrap. I'm going to put that aside. And now what I want to do is for these album covers and the spine, I'm going to increase my cardstock by an inch for each direction on the cover. So let me say this, the chipboard happens to be seven inches by nine inches for this example. So my cardstock will be an inch on top and an inch on the bottom. So that is two inches added to that dimension. And then the same thing, two inches added because of the sides. So I'm gonna be 11 inches. So I need two pieces of cardstock that measure this. And then, I'm gonna go ahead and show that. So take your chipboard and add two inches to each direction. And this is if you are using the spacers or if you're just using an inch um, dimension all the way around to wrap your chipboard like I do. But then you have your spine, and in my case, my spine chipboard is one and a half times nine inches tall. So this is my chipboard and my card stock is gonna be an inch and a half 
on each of the sides. So I'm gonna be using this spacer. So I need an inch and a half here and an inch and a half here. So that means three inches for the sides plus one and a half inches. So three plus one and a half is four and a half. And then on the height, I'm still going to do a one inch spacer on the height. So I need an inch up here and an inch down there. So that's two inches plus my nine inches. That means 11 inches still for my spine piece. Okay. Now let's go ahead and cut that cardstock. I'm going to get out three sheets. I'm going to cut the first one. We said nine by 11, so I'm gonna cut down to nine. Twist it and cut it at 11. I need a second one, that's the same. Nine, twist it and cut it down to 11. Now my next one for the spine cover is four and a half by 11. So I'm gonna cut four, a piece that is four and a half inches wide by 11. Okay, I'm gonna put these to the side and use later. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my scoreboard. And I'm gonna first start with my covers. So I'm going to use my spacers here that are available at Country Craft Creations. I'm going to stick the paper in my scoreboard all the way up against the corner and use those two one half inch spacers. And when I glue this down, I'm going to be bumping it right up against those spacers and setting it down so that it glues down to the paper and I end up having an inch all the way around. Now I like to use glue. So of course the video cut off before I realized it but I went ahead and covered my two chipboard covers. So again, those are two inches wider and two inches taller than the chipboard is the measurement for your cardstock. And then cut out all four corners after you burnish them. And then you can go ahead and wrap that cardstock around each of the edges. Then with the spine piece, you want to have a piece of cardstock that measures three inches larger than the width of your spine and two inches taller than the height of your spine. So in this example, my spine is one and a half inches by nine inches. So I'm going to add three inches to that which takes me to four and a half, and then two inches for the, the height of the spine, I'm gonna add to it, so I come to 11. After I do that, I uh, glue it right in the center of that piece. I am using my handy dandy spacers that I have from Country Craft Creations. And when I put my paper down in there, what I end up with and I, is by using this, I have a one and a half inch space over here, a one and a half inch space right here. And then I have the one inch that I went ahead and folded over the top and the bottom after I cut out those rectangles. So don't wrap your flaps on the sides of your spine only do the top and the bottom. Now, oh, I need this. So with this lay flat method, the way that I do this 
is I make sure to burnish on each side of the chipboard so that you can really define the limits of that chipboard. And then I stick this into my scoreboard. And what I do is, because I use glue for this, I don't wanna put glue right up against the chipboard edge because it will be squirting out. And the other thing that I like to do is to leave a little bit of a gap. So by using my scoreboard, I can align the chipboard up to one of the measurements, I just pick one. And then when I glue this down, I'm able to use my scoreboard as a guide to give me whatever spacing I want in between the two pieces of chipboard, and then use the top of the scoreboard as a guide so that I know it's straight. And this helps me get my albums put together very simply. Now, when I glue on these wings, I usually stay about a half inch away from the chipboard. And then what I'll do is I will place a bead of glue on this back side of the cover. And that way I don't have to worry about getting glue too close here. Now I typically like to use a quarter of an inch for the gap and I'll show you why but I'm gonna go ahead and burnish this down. And then I'm gonna flip it over and burnish it again. And then what I like to do is go ahead and burnish in between right up against that chipboard piece of the cover. And this starts to give me a rounded edge here and if you are using artisan cardstock, it is definitely more pliable than other cardstock. So you want to be very careful. They might rip uh, if you're using something else. But I like to pull the spine a little bit so that I start getting a nice rounded edge in between the cover and the spine like that instead of a sharp edge. I like to get a rounded edge. I think it looks nicer and it's just become the way that I like to do it. So make sure that you burnish really well. That is the key for holding your album together. Okay, now I'm going to flip this around and do exactly the same thing on this part of my album. flat I'm going to push I'm pushing this album cover back a little bit I'm aligning the edges here I'm holding it down really well now if you don't have strength in your hands you may not be able to do this but I like the look of that rounded edge right there and that's how I do it and that gives me my album my lay flat album and what I would suggest you do is also go ahead and cut another piece of cardstock to lie right here. So instead of the full height of your chipboard, which in our case, in this example was nine inches, I'm just gonna cut it an eighth of an inch shorter than that measurement. So I'm gonna cut this one at eight and seven eighths inches. And there's the dry fit. And then I'm gonna place my glue along that spine and go ahead and glue this down. Burnish it really well. Now I only put glue so far 
along that spine piece. I'm doing pretty well with this light paper. I'm not usually one to do an album without inking. It's very rare, but in this case, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn it around and do this. I'm gonna burnish in between right there because I want it just to, to teach it that that's where it's gonna go when the album is folded. And I'm gonna go ahead and bend this back and place a little bit of glue here. This is only on the portion that's gonna be attached to the cover. I don't put glue or any adhesive in that portion uh, in between. It's just not the way that I do it. I like it to freely move there on its own. So again, this was just for the purpose of training the paper in that fashion. The glue gives me a little bit of play time with it. That dry adhesive just doesn't. And just like that, I have my album cover that I can now work with and use and put my papers, my pretty papers in for the hinge piece. I to go through this together. I'm gonna cut one piece for the hinge. We have four pages for each page, we need a one inch. And in between each of the pages, we need half an inch. So since we have three spaces that are in between pages, three times a half inch is one and a half inches, plus the inch for each page. So that's going to be four inches plus one and a half inches. So we need a hinge that measures five and a half by the height of our page. And the height of our page here was eight and a quarter. We want it to be a little bit less than the page itself so that it can slide inside of the tube. So I'm gonna take an eighth of an inch off. So we're gonna make our hinges the height of that, eight and an eighth. Okay. Now, on the five and a half inch side, we're gonna score at half an inch, one inch, one and a half inches, two inches, two and a half inches, three inches, three and a half inches, four, four and one half, and five. So it's at every half inch. This is the way that you end up with a mountain for page one to go on top of. You end up with a gusset, then another mountain, this is page two, a gusset, page three, a gusset, and page four. This is where you glue This is where you glue. So you have this side and this side glued together. You glue underneath the mountain. After you've put that together, then you'd be left with three gussets and four hinges. Glue the whole thing down to your spine after you put your decorative paper, if you wish. 
and then you can slip your tube pages onto each one of those hinges. I hope that was helpful for you. Until next time, happy crafting you all. Bye.